It's alive! <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so the last two months I've been monitoring all my little gouache palettes. This one I've just recently cleaned out. I've emptied it, although you can see how stained it is. But in this video, I'm gonna share all of the results with you. I'm gonna show you which brands were more prone to molding and just talk you through my process. And I've already posted a separate video about how you can prevent mold or deal with it if you already have it in your palette. This video is more of an experiment and just an ongoing obsession with gouache. I just wanna learn everything I can about it. <laughs> And if you're one of those people who just does not want to deal with wet gouache in a palette or even think about mold on your paint, I also have a video about how I use dried gouache in a palette, which I have to say has become one of my favorite methods for using gouache. Okay, let's get started. <laughs> Okay, let me give you a little recap about what's happening. I'm putting 12 different brands of gouache into these airtight palettes. I have not added any biocide or clove bud oil or anything to prevent mold. It's simply straight out of the tube into the palette. The experiment will last about two months and I'm splitting it into two phases. In phase one, I will simply be monitoring the gouache in its natural form without any interference. I'll check on it once a week for about four weeks, and of course along the way I'll be documenting what I find. Then in phase two, I will paint with the gouache, which introduces potential contaminants, and that could either be from the paint water or the brushes. Then I'll seal them back up and let them sit. I'll check on them once a week, and after two or three weeks I'll use the gouache again. And of course that potentially introduces even more contaminants. So I'll monitor those palettes for another two weeks after that. Okay, so now you know the plan. Let me show you what happened. Okay, it's been five days since I've checked these. So that should be enough time to see if anything has changed. We're starting with the... Shin Han, Windsor Newton, and Schmincke. And yeah, I don't see anything wrong with these. Then we have the Arteza Royal Talons and Dollar Brownie. Ooh, that, ooh, that looks suspicious. This color especially. There looks like there's something going on. <laughs> Uh, the other colors, these look absolutely perfect. They look like new. <laughs> but yeah, that one, I'll take a photo of that one. And then we have the Hemi, Mia, Royal Langnickel, and Caran Oh, They look absolutely brand new. <laughs> yeah. Then we have M. Graham. Looks good. And we have Holbein and Daniel Smith. Yep, still looks brand new. <laughs> okay, so that is how my checks go. I open them, give a little recap of what's happening, but with the power of editing, I will spare you way too much rambling and I'll just get to the point. As you know, in phase one, I was just checking them every few weeks, and out of phase one, the only problem I saw week after week was the Arteza. Oddly though, it was only two of the colors that had issues, but they continually got worse. There was some kind of slime mold growing on it, and this is what it looked like by the end of the month. <gasps> Ew, there's definitely something growing on the Arteza. Something weird is happening with this color especially. But to be honest, I was surprised that there was only one brand that had issues in phase one. Because of how many comments I get on my videos over the years, especially relating to keeping wet gouache in a palette, I really thought that the m -gram would have issues. But again, in phase one, I wasn't using the gouache, which is obviously not what normal people do. <laughs> so that's why I'm doing phase two. This is where it gets real, actually using the gouache and introducing potential contaminants, and then seeing if any of the other brands have issues. 
So in phase two, I'm starting to use the gouache. In order to keep things fair, I'm using fresh water for each brand. I'm also rinsing out my paint bucket, just like I would normally do. Basically, I'm treating this like a normal paint session, except I'm obviously not painting anything recognizable. <laughs> After I use each one, I try not to leave any excess water sitting in each color. I just try to treat it like my normal palette and do things evenly among all the brands. And yes, I did scrape off all of the mold off the Arteza. Since it was just some surface slime mold, it was really easy to remove. Okay, it's time to check on our gouache after we used it. This is eight days later. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, but we'll see. So this is the He Me Mia Royal Langnickel and Karen Dosh. And yeah, it's dirt it's dirty obviously because I mixed up the colors, but there's nothing growing. Next we have the Shinhan Windsor Newton and Schminke. Once again, it's discolored because I mixed the colors up, but nothing looks to be growing. Doesn't look odd at all. Then we have the Arteza, the Royal Talons, and the Dollar Rowney. I'm definitely, I'm definitely nervous about the Arteza. Ew. Oh god. Okay. Oh, what is going on with that one? And these look perfectly fine. No issues with those, but yeah, the Arteza, especially on the left, Yikes, that's weird. <laughs> Next we have the Holbein and the Daniel Smith. And they look good. I mean, obviously, again, discolored because I mixed the colors up, but they are not growing anything or looking weird in any way. And last but not least, the M. Graham. Um, yeah, that looks okay. I don't see anything going on. So once again, I'm going to spare you all of my rambling and all of my checks, but I will cut to the chase. Once again, I experienced problems with Arteza. Every week after checking the Arteza, it got a little bit worse. And as I said, after two weeks of letting the gouache sit, I used it all again. Then I let it sit for another week, and that's when I also noticed problems on the M-gram. So all in all, it took quite a long time for issues to show up on the M-gram gouache, but here it is. Oh, okay, uh, there's something going on with this one. The black has some kind of matte spots on it, which look different to the matte that happens when it dries because it's kind of bumpy. So that might be the start of a couple mold patches. It's hard to show it in the video, but I'll take photos of these just in case. If it's progressed. Ew. Oh God. Yeah. That's fuzzy. Oh God. Okay, I'm gonna close it up. I don't wanna be breathing anything. Uh, the other one looks, the other ones look okay, but yeah, I'm gonna take a photo of that. So in the end, this is what the Arteza looked like, and this is what the M-Gram looked like. These were the only two gouache brands that I had issues with throughout the whole experiment. Now serving some moldy gouache hot off the shelf. Uh, but yeah, the mold tests are done. That's two months. I'm not doing it anymore. Lots of gross stuff in here that I'm going to clean out and I'll compile all my results on the database and then make a whole video about it and share it with you guys. Now, technically I could have used a lot of this gouache, but to be honest, I was a bit nervous that some of it was contaminated or growing mold without me realizing it and it just hadn't showed up in full force yet. Plus, I really was not careful when I was using it and mixing with it and I really cross-contaminated a lot of the colors, so many of them are very dirty. I mean, yeah, I did cringe a little bit when I felt like, oh, I'm wasting all this gouache, but then I had to remind myself that I have dozens and dozens of tubes of it in my office, and it's all fresh and clean and mold-free and waiting for me to use it. 
So since I wasn't desperate for all of the squash, I just cleaned it out. And in order to do that, I scooped the majority out, put it on a paper towel, let it completely dry, and then crumbled it off into the trash. And then I reused those paper towels as much as I could. And then I rinsed them out thoroughly in the sink. And after all of the pallets and everything was scrubbed clean as much as I could, I sprayed each of them with disinfectant. And I'm just using regular household disinfectant. You could pretty much use anything as long as you then rinse it very, very thoroughly afterwards. You don't want any remainder disinfectant to sit in the palette before you put new gouache in it because it could potentially bleach your new colors or, you know, do something weird that you don't want it to. And then I have lots of palettes to use, which is kind of fun because I think I want to make one of these that's kind of like a more muted pastel palette and maybe another one that's stronger color. But anyway, lots of room to play now. Every artist is going to have different requirements for their supplies and what kind of paint they like to use for different types of reasons. Since starting this experiment, I have learned a lot. And one of the things that I didn't realize is that a lot of brands use something called Biocide. This is something that is pretty much industry standard in not just artist paints, but in like automotive paint and house paint and just a lot of different things. <laughs> and the reason that they do that is to give it a longer shelf life and obviously reduce issues down the line. The bio side that each company uses is usually proprietary and they don't disclose it to the public unless you dig deep. <laughs> Some brands are a little bit more upfront about it and actually maybe you guys recognize that Miyahimi sells their own version of Biocide technically. It's like their anti-fungal spray that they sell for their gouache. They are the only company that I've ever seen do that. So I already know a lot of people are going to comment and be like, I already knew that Mgram is more, more moldy than other brands <laughs> because so many people have issues with it. And it could be that Arteza and Mgram don't have any biocides in their paint, but it could also be the actual ingredients in the binder. But what it comes down to is it does make a difference in how you use the gouache. If you want to make sure you don't get mold in your gouache, again, I have a whole other video about that. And I've been using a wet palette for over a year, almost two years, and have never had mold in it because I do very specific things. And it's a bunch of different brands too. It's not just a single brand. But like I said, I've also been diving into the world of using dried gouache in, a, in my little palette. And this is a bunch of different brands. And again, I have a whole other video about setting up this palette. I'll also do a recap about how this has been going at the end of April, because some of you know, I'm painting outside every day during April for the Plen April challenge. And I've been using this quite a lot. I'm also using my wet gouache palette and kind of comparing the two experiences side by side. So I'm not gonna tell you one brand is better or worse than the other. <laughs> I'm going to just present the facts and I've updated my gouache database with all of these findings, including the pictures and the dates that I checked everything and little notes about it. So if you're interested in that, go check out, I'll, I'll put the link in the description. And if you have not watched my video about preventing mold in your palette, the, my top advice is to use your palette at least once a week. Don't let it sit for too long. Open it up, get some fresh water in there, get some fresh air in there, use the colors <laughs> and actually paint with it. I mean, in the end, that's the whole point. If you find yourself never using your wet gouache palette and it just sits there for ages and you're worried about mold, just don't put gouache in these. Just use it from the tube. If it's, if it's taking you that long to use the gouache, just don't even bother. So there's my two cents for what it's worth. Hope you guys enjoy coming along with me on my weird experiments. <laughs> to be honest, I'm kind of sick of doing brand comparisons and like all of these kinds of videos. I really just want to paint. I have so much gouache and so many supplies and so much inspiration because it's spring now. So in the coming months, you're definitely going to see a lot more painting than all this other stuff. <laughs> but you know, Sometimes I just got to get it out of my system. So thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Take care.